think it's um as you can see i got new hair uh it actually glows in the dark so give me one sec oh man you can't see shit <laughs> you can't see fucking anything <laughs> wow okay i'll show you guys the video that i made the other day hey kids as you can see, got a new do. Got a lot of little accessories and leaves and shit in my hair. Looks rather nice. But I'm about to show you what this do could do. Ooh. Oh shit, sorry, start it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Yo. So, season's greetings for your boy Finn. Be glowing out here. So yeah, that's my hair. So the video I wanted to do today is kind of a continuation of a video I did a while back. Um, Legit Boring number 148, uh, Being Married. And so in that video, I talked about wanting to uh, outline the experience of being married, but also the experience of romantic love. So for people that are new to the channel, yes, I am married. Um, I call my husband Diglett because he looks like a Diglett. Pretty simple. So if you look back at um, number 148, you'll get a better idea of the married experience for me and the circumstances that um, kind of culminated in me getting married the way that I did. Um, it was pretty abrupt. So I won't get into that here. Um, what I'm going to talk about is love, romantic love, because that is something that is so unfathomably difficult for me to understand, perceive, uh, just wrap my mind around. And I don't want to start buying into a matter of normativity. Um, it's kind of the concept that different types of attraction, different types of love have a hierarchy that like... When you enter any kind of relationship with a person um, that's outside of your family, um, it goes from friends to relationship to romantic love. That's like that's the way that it is. Like it's a hierarchy and it's a timeline. And uh, I don't want to, you know, start dipping my toes in that water, but I do think that familial love is a little bit more rudimentary. I mean, it can become, you know, very deep and very um, complicated, but when you're a baby, you have the capacity to love your family. Um, that's something that's kind of inherent, while uh, romantic love isn't so much. It, you, As you grow older, um, you develop the capacity to um, be romantically interested in others. And of course, that's not the case for everyone, um, myself included. Uh, I, I don't think that romantic love is something that is within my power. And I base this on not just my experience with Dig, but also my experience with others. Um, over time, I've just found that, you know, how people say, when you're in love, you just know it. Well, I just know that love is not something that I feel. And I do experience other types of love. Um, and that's why I was mentioning a matter of normativity. I don't want to make it seem like familial or platonic love is any less than romantic love. But for me, somewhere along the way, some wires got crossed or something broke or I don't know I just never developed the capacity to be romantically in love with someone and I, I do experience romantic interest and so infatuation is something that is something that I've experienced I, I definitely know what it feels like to have a crush on someone um, but beyond that once those initial feelings kind of fade, I'm left with nothing. Um, and so I have to uh, 
find other ways to connect with others and is made difficult by just the way that I am because I'm not particularly interested in connecting with others but I realize I need other people to exist comfortably that I, I need a support system in order to continue existing in the way that I have been um, but I'm not I'm not terribly interested in making connections and so there's this clash between what I want and what I need and what the world wants from me and how to exist within a world that's not designed for me to exist comfortably. And so you make compromises. And I remember a while back me and Dig having a conversation about love. <clears throat> I remember at one point I said that he loved me more than I love him and that really upset him and I could understand why but at this point I was you know 19 I was I was pretty young and so my conception of love was a little warped and over time I grew to understand um, like different types of love and so what I was telling him was that I felt like I I loved him less than he loved me but that's that wasn't true I was putting a premium on romantic love um, the whole idea of a matter of normativity that romantic love is above and beyond all types of love when that's not true um, I feel that the type of love that I have to offer as a person who doesn't experience romantic love is just as valuable as romantic love um, and I think in some cases depending on the situation even more so because I'm not motivated um, by romance I'm not motivated by the the butterflies in your stomach or those just feelings of fancy I'm just I'm, I'm not interested in the the intimacy part of the experience but I will still compromise and indulge in it um, for the sake of my partner and I think that doing that when you don't experience romantic attraction when you don't experience sexual attraction is pretty goddamn selfless like not to say like I'm you know fucking Mother Teresa but I am doing a thing that is entirely against my nature not for my own sake but for the sake of my partner and it can come off a lot like a business transaction like an arrangement and in many cases it it, it kind of is an arrangement um, you're you're trading what you have of value for what your partner has of value and there's this mutual understanding and mutual agreement that you will give all you can give uh, for them and they will do the same in return. I feel like I, I do do a lot um, for the sake of loving my husband um, but I there's a lot of me that just isn't congruent with romantic love with being married with the conventional ideals that surround romantic love. I It's just not me and so I have a hard time uh, reconciling myself with it and uh, from time to time I will have almost like sexual urges I will have romantic urges and it is the oddest thing ever because it's like it's like being a person without an esophagus and being hungry and not having a feeding tube I don't have any other vehicle to express these feelings to to, to gain them in any way um, and so what I do to kind of excise this energy out of myself is write fix I write fan fix it's a little fucking embarrassing but it actually does help 
a lot to write about the things that you would like to happen even though you know you could never enjoy them um like not in the way that they're supposed to be enjoyed i don't write about you know angsty shit i don't write about depression or having an eating disorder or psychosis and none of that shit because i have so much bad shit going on in my life too much fucking chaos going on that I would rather spend my time concentrating on the good things that I would like to be in my life. Um, and I realize for some people that seems like I am dodging, like, like I'm trying to avoid tackling the issue. But for me, writing is the escape and I, I don't want to, I don't want to shit where I eat, so to speak. I want to keep that, the thing that I do to feel better and I'll tackle intimacy problems some other way. But yeah, I, I have a hard time understanding, feeling loved. Um, I've talked about this as well, feeling missed. Um, I can't remember which Legit Boring it is, but probably around 120, maybe before that. It was back when I was in Louisiana and I, I did a video on being missed. I just don't understand projecting your feelings onto someone else so that they feel them. Like, I don't, I don't think, I, it doesn't compute to me. It doesn't seem possible. Um, and it's easier to understand hate because there are actions that are entirely born of hate. So like someone who's racist killing somebody because they're a little too brown for their liking. I understand that. Um, I understand the hate in that. But love, on the other hand, is a lot more difficult for me to wrap my head around um, because some of the things that people do when they dislike someone or when they hate someone, they also do when they love them. If that makes sense, there's there's a lot of toxicity in love and I grew up experiencing that toxicity and so it makes love a confusing concept um and something that i just did not engage with at all to the point that i don't understand it now and i i realized like that might make me sound dumb like that i can't tell the difference between just liking someone and loving someone but i can't tell the difference i couldn't tell you the difference. I know there is a difference, but I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. And being in love versus loving someone, I don't know what being in love feels like. But I, I do kind of understand love as far as like just feeling love for a person, like your family, or I don't know, like my dog, like I love my dog, um, but it's, it's all just too, it's too fucking complicated for me to, to, to entirely wrap my head around, um, in any meaningful way, and I'm fairly certain that Romantic love is just not in the cards for me. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, like, you know, I can't be a fulfilled human being. But it is a part of the experience, a facet of the human experience that is just closed off to me. And I would rather experience as much as I can. If I can. But, uh, yeah, I don't see that happening anytime soon.